internet, and welcome back to Makers on Tap, the podcast where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff and maker culture. I'm your host, Aaron, and tonight, we have a very special surprise for you. We decided that seeing how next week will be our 52nd episode, marking a whole year of recording this podcast, we decided to edit and upload our very first time recording, what we're calling the unaired pilot. It was recorded in the old makerspace before we had moved, and it was the first time the three of us ever sat together and recorded something. So you can clearly tell we're not great at recording at this point. We chose a very poor recording environment. Our back and forth, our rapport with each other clearly isn't there yet, which is very interesting to listen to. The audio is not great because of all that. I've done my best to edit it, make it sound better. So bear with us. I hope you enjoy it. And with that, here we go. All right, so this is a trial run for the audio and technical everything, right? For the Makers on Tap podcast, which is a really bad idea that we came up with at River City Labs one night when we were heavily on tap. And it's just been a continuing thing of crap that we should probably do. And now we're doing it. And I can't believe we're actually sitting down and accomplishing something. Oh yeah, I, we're actually like actually recording at this point. So this is quite a I surprise. guess the, the, this is the most accomplishing like thing that three people have done at River City Labs in months. So before we get too far into this, we probably should say who we are. Nah, and the audience knows who we are already <laughs> by reputation. My reputation precedes me. Quite. <laughs> All right, so since you want to intro so bad, intro. Oh, yeah, no, that's that's a great one. Uh, so, hi, my name is Christian. I am one of the directors here at River City Labs. Been a member for right around three and a half years um, and been a part of the Make community ever since. Um, sitting next to me is Aaron. Yes, that is what they call me. <laughs> Uh, my name is Aaron Peterson. I am the current vice president of River City Labs, and uh, I do. I'm a software developer by trade, and I uh, more identify as a maker lately. As far as well, that's a whole other discussion as far as how people identify themselves. So I'm not going to get too into it. But uh, and go ahead, Joe. And um, I'm Joe Spanier. Did you give your position at River City Labs? I, did, I think I believe I said I was the vice president. Okay. Yeah. So I'm the uh, president of River City Labs currently and one of the founding members of the Makerspace. And um, you know, for those of you, if this ever sees the light of outside the Makerspace, if you don't know what River City Labs is, we are a community makerspace in uh, Peoria, Illinois. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and uh, we've got about 55 ish members. Uh, we're currently down in the warehouse district and, um, you know, doing the maker spacey thing. Um, so, do our viewers know where our space is located? Or are we just in a generic warehouse district somewhere in the United we're States? We're in a warehouse somewhere district deep in, the in warehouse central district. Illinois. <laughs> in a town that makes big yellow tractors. Is that good enough? Big Pure fuzzy, Illinois. Big fuzzy worms. <laughs> big fuzzy worms. Big fuzzy worm tractors. Yeah. Big fuzzy worm tractors. Um, and there's something. So, uh, yeah, I'm the president and one of the founding members. And, uh, yeah, I, I currently identify as a maker as well. I'm, I'm pretty stoked on uh, the potential of in the next few months I can actually be a maker instead of just identifying and managing them i can like actually take some time and, and maybe make something and not be stressed about it all the time so that, i'm i'm pretty excited about that uh one of the things i want to make is this podcast so so christian you didn't say what you identify as i i heard it was something some form of attack helicopter i i personally identify as a black hawk attack helicopter that, that's what i heard that is the i, I just wanted to confirm thing. it for, for those of you who can't line. see christian is about the size of a black hawk attack helicopter <laughs> he's like 6 10 and of just like big cuddly hairy awesomeness so, so 
I love that you make me go family friendly on this and then immediately start <laughs> insulting me. I didn't insult you at all. <laughs> You're like my favorite person in this space. We just, like, we just like to push the boundaries. Yeah. I'm eating pizza, by the way. That's delicious. <laughs> Oh, we'll man. start a separate ASMR podcast for Joe eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 100% about it. I love so, me. I cut you off in the middle of a sentence to start this podcast because one of the main reasons we started this podcast is the three of us sit around and have these really great conversations where we argue about things. No. And there are things that everybody else wants to argue about too. And so we figured people would want to listen to us argue. <laughs> we <laughs> argue good. We just <laughs> had one before we started recording. Yeah. So I made us start recording. You were saying something about the last couple weeks, and I can't remember what you were talking about now. I'm trying to get you back on topic. Because it was good. We should make a script. We, no. Bullet points. Yeah. Well, I mean, the last thing... Scripts. I mean, the last thing I... I remember us talking about was the open source. Well, we were talking about open source, and then we were giving Aaron shit for how he was completely off Google services, but now he's typing notes in Google Drive currently. Um, and then you said something along the lines of, in the last couple of weeks, I... And then I said, stop! We need to start this. And it was going to be good. Was it? Do I aspire to greatness? I don't think so. I do. Um, I do. <laughs> man, man, that's a bad segue because I didn't it know. Is. All right, well, that's fine. We can carry on with some other conversations that we stopped talking about, so we can talk about them here. I'm pretty um, easily triggered, so it won't be hard to start another one from scratch. <laughs> for for those of you that like need need some role placement here, Aaron is the open source troll that like. Troll is a very strong word. No, it's not. I prefer advocate. <laughs> Ad- advocate troll. If, if somebody's like, "Hey, I would like to use," uh, you know, let let's let's take a stab at anything. YouTube for video distribution. They're gonna be like, "That's a bunch of crap." YouTube just recently took a bunch of rights and control away from people, and now I should be. Using- what were you talking about earlier? No. You want you want to go into that one, or you want me? To? What was I talking about? Well, that was the, about the, the whole the apocalypse YouTube. and how they're restricting their users. The, the we were ta- it was, it was, well, now, we were well, talking about Discord. No we were talking about Discord earlier no, no, and how we Discord talk- was censoring servers based on content. Ah, I was talking with another which, member. I was yeah. talking about another member about YouTube and specifically about a open source version called uh, New Pipe. New Pipe, yeah, and yeah. So we're we're currently fighting through some technical issues on this podcast because Twice. of Troll Aaron, uh, but he did bend to my will on a couple things, and I'm really, really, I'm really taking those as wins <laughs> right now because you should. Like while they're still running on Linux, we are using a slightly closed uh, DAW to record this all in, and um, I'm really happy about it. We're using Reaper, by the way. Which Reaper's awesome, and uh, you guys are going to find out why Reaper is awesome so so quickly as we dive into this world. But it's 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 just yeah. wonderful, and it's not made by Adobe, and that's that might be the best reason it's awesome. Yeah. So my whole goal for this podcast was to create it on a hundred percent open source stack, mostly to maintain control over every aspect of it. Um, as you lose some control anytime you use a hosted service. But uh, so my plan was 100% open source hosted. So our podcast site is hosted on a WordPress. We have the simple podcasting plugin for it. I was hoping to use something like Audacity or Ardor to record it. But and, and Reaper. And I'm still open to Ardor. Yeah. I'm still open to that, but I yeah. know how to use Reaper. Part of the thing is that none of us are experienced with any of this stuff. So we're just pl- playing it by ear. So I will admit one of my concessions with this podcast was allowing the use of Reaper just for the fact that it is so feature packed and no open source thing that I found hasn't come close to it. I also haven't learned much about our door. I feel like that would come close, but I just haven't spent the time to learn it. So 
No, that's fair. And Christian just looks sad because we're not using Audition. I mean, that's it. If we're going into roles, um, with Aaron being the open source guru and just wanting to delve into I appreciate everything. you not using the word troll. <laughs> troll, it's very <laughs> condescending. Troll. I guess I would probably be the closed source noob. Um, I will absolutely buy into like just about anything. I think I'm one of two people who actually carries an Apple product into the space and gets reamed every time that it gets brought up. <laughs> hey, we've never set your phone on fire or thrown it against the wall. <laughs> I mean, it's because your Samsungs do that for you. <laughs> one plus. Well, yeah, you have one plus. Every day. <laughs> but, no, so I, um, I basically am a wannabe maker. Um, I very much, like, delve into wanting to do cool stuff. Um, and wanting to create really cool stuff, but I never have the time, and so I stick to my models. So you call okay. yourself a, a, a wannabe maker, yet just last year you made a full-size arcade cabinet from scratch with a built-in generator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. <laughs> this, 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 this dives into what I really wanted our first podcast to be about, and I, so I don't want to dive into it too far, but Christian, there's no such thing as a wannabe maker. You tried, and you tried hard, and you made something good that wasn't, it wasn't necessarily your vision, but nobody makes their vision on the first try. Well, that's I fair. Do. Nobody does. Nobody does. You haven't met me. <laughs> no, I I think, um, but like limit, limiting yourself and, and saying like, well, this isn't going to be perfect, so I'm not even going to try. Is so, it's so against everything we're trying to do. It, Man, you're really putting me on the spot here, aren't you? <laughs> no, I mean, this is stuff I've been saying to you for a long time. Yeah, but that's not necessarily. Recorded over, format, <laughs> recorded or even in person. So, uh, to put some context in here. Uh, Aaron and Christian and I probably spend about three hours a week together. Sometimes um, the makerspace meets up once a week, uh, regularly, and uh, Christian works an insane amount of hours. Yeah, and uh. Aaron is a new parent, and I have three kids and work an incredible amount of hours, and so does Aaron. So we don't always meet up every week, but we chat constantly on our online community that our makerspace has called Slack. Um, everybody has a Slack, it seems like, anymore, but um, our Slack rolls 24-7, 365, like, this year I was sending Slack messages from the Thanksgiving dinner table because it, there was a fun conversation going on. And so it, these guys are, are two of the people I talk to the most, but probably two of the people I see the least. So we, we see these, we say these things to each other to our faces very little. Um, and it's really easy to ignore things that come in over uh, internet typey areas. But it, it's serious though. So, one of the things that the makerspace strives constantly to fight is this idea that if you're not going to make it perfect, you shouldn't even try. Or um, if you, if it didn't it meet your exact vision, you failed. Um, there, there's iteration, there's um, attempts, and there's constant, constant, constant learning. If you learned something from the process, you won. Like you succeeded. Because you can always do it again, or uh, take everything that you learned from the previous one and put it into the next project. And uh, yeah, like, like, so there, there's no such thing as a wanted to be maker. Like you show up every week, you you push your boundaries, you push your time, you you put your heart and soul into everything you do. Like we we give one of our members crap constantly for being the lazy maker, and he's probably the one who accomplishes the most out of all of us. And uh, it's just really fun to give him crap because he takes it so well and he gives it back so hard. Um, but so hard. So hard. Yeah, that's Jay. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, like wait, we constantly give him crap for being the lazy maker, but he probably gets the most done out of any of us in truth. 
Uh, he he just commits most, himself to them. He gets the most non makey stuff done, which yeah. is also the, some of the most important stuff that needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I got on a soapbox there for a second. Yes. I, no, I'm trying to stop you. It's respectful. But like, it's definitely, definitely something that I'm super excited to talk about on, on this show, which is how we fail at things and what can we take away from it. Yeah. Uh, personally, for me, I have no problem jumping into a project and getting it done. The problem for me is finishing the last, getting 90% of it done, finishing the last 10%. Because once that 10% is done, now it needs to be like quote unquote graded. And growing up, every, everything that I did. He means all of us. Yes. So growing, growing up, everything that I did could have been done better, according to my mother. So now. Growing oh, yeah. up, every, th- everything I do, this is becoming a three way therapy session, very quick. <laughs> but everything I do now, once it's done, it's like, well, how could you have done it better? And it's like, ugh. And now, now I'm scared to finish things because then it needs to be evaluated. But then, but then, like, when it goes into, like, how could it be done better? The obvious answer is, well, you could have finished it. <laughs> but like, I, I think that's a common thread throughout all of us in the makerspace is like all of our problem or projects take on a problem that we want to solve. Whether, you know, it's I have a project in my head right now where I want to build a fetch robot for my dog so I can stop touching slobbery frisbees. And like the real problem that I want to solve is I want to figure out how to build a robot that fill, throws frisbees and resets itself. And the second I figure out how to make that robot reset itself, I'm done. I don't actually want to finish it. The problem there will never be a frisbee throwing robot. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going to figure out how to, to reset that sling, and then I'm going to be bored. So, so Joe, Joe, would, would you, you patent, patent that idea? idea? When you solve, solve the problem, problem. absolutely not. I'm going to document it. No, I'm not. I, <laughs> <laughs> I started a blog to document my projects like 13 times, and uh, my current blog doesn't even have a good introduction. It's still the lore if I'm talking about skateboarding. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's... again, though, it's I I I get started on something. I I start to solve the problem that the project. I, I solved the hurdle that was really involved with the project, but not necessarily the project. Well, it's just and, the formality uh, at that point. Yeah, I, yeah. And then, and then I'm bored. Uh, it, it's also why, like, all of my machines are never cleaned at the end. Like, the wires are still hanging out, and like, <laughs> my my laser that's three years old is still missing body panels, and like. He's like, that, guess that part's boring. Like, I built a laser. Why do I need to put panels on it? I'm the only one that uses it. I wear glasses. It's fine. Yo, safety. Out the window. Out the window. <laughs> I, I wear glasses. It's fine. I've only <laughs> set my shirt on fire once. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that is one too many times, sir. <laughs> With a laser. You should uh, buy more shirts, Christian. Christian. Yeah, that's the problem. That's, that's I just need more solution. shirts. Just... But, yeah, it, I don't know. It's something that I'm trying to trying to fix, but I, I totally get where you're coming from. Where like finishing a project is kind of boring. I, I do remember a, a very specific point in my childhood when um, finishing a project, I got this feeling of accomplishment and like wonderfulness, where like my whole body was just kind of buzzing for a second. And I was like, oh, how do I get this again? What is going? Oh, I'm finished. And it, I was finishing. I was in the finishing stages of a model rocket that I was building. I was probably like ten. And um, I said, "How do I get to this point again?" Oh, I have to start over and actually finish a model rocket again. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna feel this again ever. Um, and you know, I recently had that again where I was uh, finishing up a, a machine that I've been building. <laughs> I've been retrofitting for like three and a half years, and um, what kind of machine is it? It's a it's a CNC mill from the mid '90s, and uh, I uh, I've completely torn it down and updated it to modern hardware, 
Uh, so it runs off of USB and a Raspberry Pi, and it works really well. And the other day, I finished a bunch of things in it to make it really usable, and I was like, oh, there's that feeling. It's still not done. Um, I actually ordered parts yesterday to like actually finish finish it because I kind of want to sell it so I can start a new project. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that'll ever be done to the point of done. I don't what know. is done? What is done? Yeah, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I think that's weird because, like, I see what you're saying, and I I've gotten that before. But one of the more recent things I've started doing is, um, I've I've tried to find uh, a meditative thing I I can do, um, and it used to be Legos, um, and I used to love like having the Legos done and like looking at it and it like being awesome and it's like i just freaking built that but then legos got really freaking expensive yeah they did (laughs) and so i started building gundams um because i have friends in japan and i can get them very cheaply and i cannot tell you like the satisfactory feeling of like just finishing a gundam and it's just like i get what you're saying and i i i felt that too when you get to that hurdle because that was funny enough that was the arcade for me was when i got the controller working with the raspberry pi and like plugged it into my tv for the first time and started using the joystick and all the buttons worked i didn't even want to finish the rest of the cabinet i was like this is it yeah i have a working two-player controller that is working off a raspberry pi running retro pi and it's playing street fighter i could not ask for anything more (laughs) but it was it was that part of like getting myself to get to that point and it did feel even more rewarding now there was a whole bunch of stuff when i first unveiled that thing that kind of like made me feel a little uneasy but having it like working and dispensing root beer and doing all this cool stuff on it was so freaking awesome and i pretty much get that consistently every time that i'm building these gundams i'm like able to put something together i'm able to see a finished product and it looks badass yeah like it's the 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 feeling of accomplishing something and doing something awesome is bar none amazing and it's it it's what keeps me still wanting to make and why making is such a meditative thing for me mm-hmm. yeah i don't know I don't if know i get, get that, that feeling <laughs> for me <laughs> it's, it's more of the built-up built anxiety, anxiety of taking on a project, project and then and just, just alleviating that anxiety by completing it. I, whenever I finish finish something, it's more of, thank God this is done. done. Now I can move on to the next thing. thing. I never never really get that that euphoria of, I made made something. something. It's It's more of, finally, I can move on to something else else to get knocked knocked down this list of never-ending tasks. But if if you feel that anxiety about projects, why do you take them on? Because I hate myself. You are a, a masochist. Little, a little known secret. <laughs> I can never, never take, take the easy way out of anything. As, and that's why as you open source stroll. As, as you've seen, seen with getting, getting this whole podcast, podcast set up, I couldn't. I couldn't ju- we, we, we we have uh, a, fully a fully hosted, hosted server that, that we could have used to host the website for the podcast. podcast. But I it's like, like, but no, I can't. I don't have control over that server, so I'm going to set it up from scratch. Well, I, I completely get it, because I've always been a, an underdog kind of guy. Like, um, when the early, 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 early tablets came out, I had a Nokia N7, which was the worst tablet ever. Right, yeah, see? It ran, it ran like a super early version of Linux, and the only thing I ever got it to do well was Google Talk. And uh, that was fun. Like, that worked well. Uh, I paid like $300 to Google talk with a couple friends for like three weeks while I was interested in this thing. Uh, Or another example of like an underdog thing that I got really heavily invested in was Asus Netbooks. They didn't ever work well, but they were fun. I've got one uh, myself. And I, I worked really, really hard to make it work like the expensive version of something better. Perfect example is RepRap. And RepRap is something that is near to dear to all three of our hearts. It's the open source 3D printing project. Um, I had a very first gen uh, Prusa Mendel 3D printer, and it 
originally printed completely and utterly horrible. I had a kilogram of, no, one pound of filament last me two years because I refused to use it because it worked so bad. And then I got my hands on a closed source 3D printer, which was a MakerBot Rep 2. Actually, it was a 2X because it printed ABS and had two extruders. And um, it printed pretty well when I worked on it really hard. And then I said, okay, if 3D printing can look like this, I'm going to make my underdog RepRap three-generation old printer work like this. And I put hundreds of eh, tens of hours into it <laughs> until it printed like the MakerBot. And I, I've always fought to make the underdog work as good as the commercial variant. So I completely get it. But now I'm busy. So yeah. like, occasionally I make concessions where I have to. I still refuse to do a lot of things, though. It's this definitely makes me feel superior to people like Christian that use Adobe products. <laughs> I mean, I really have no defense to that. <laughs> like, it was it was what I was trained on. It was what I had access to, and yeah, it's totally. what I love. That makes perfect sense. It you were trained on sense. it. Yeah, it works. Like that. That is why I still use AutoCAD when I have to fight through two D stuff instead of something horrendous like QCAD. No. It, because it works awesome. I was trained in it. I know exactly how to use it, and I can get my work done in it quickly and efficiently. And you know, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with using Adobe, Adobe products. products. The problem becomes, you know, how do you, how do you feel, feel about them having, having control, control over your entire, entire workflow, workflow or having them have, have control, control over this and that or harvesting your data or whatever? I guess... Well, especially now, because Adobe products live only in subscription world. Yes. So, yeah. like, where we're paying $60 a license for Reaper, that's three months of use for Audition... Uh, and you will you will pay twenty dollars a month forever to use Audition. There's no end to that money. Yeah. So like that, and and that's becoming more and more of a thing. And I could kind of get behind that because you know for that twenty dollars you are getting constant updates and constant support. Whereas like the Reaper license is good for versions. Uh, now, which is like 5.94 or something, something to 6.99, which is probably a year and a half of support. Um, and, you know, that's fine. Um, I, I, I wouldn't expect somebody to support something as time intensive as a DAW forever for 60 bucks. Uh, but, um, you know, am I okay with? Uh, the next two years paying $480 for something that gives me similar value. And I don't know. Well, and that's it, that's what it kind of comes down to is originally um, the price of CS6 was right around $5,600. Um, and so that was for the full Adobe suite. Um, and so I think if I remember right, um, Audition itself was $600 in CS6. And so when they unveiled, like, hey, we're going to go to a subscription model and we're going to do constant updates, it was a freaking blessing. That's uh, true. Yeah, yeah. My defense, I guess, to open source and closed source on those um, or even their control would be um, I don't like it, but I have to think that the same people who I, like, learned on are using it in Hollywood right now and they're not getting any problems. So if it's if it's okay to be used on like a movie set and like they're not having any problems on that set, then anything that I do is probably not going to have any issues. Um, do I want control? Absolutely. It's my project. I want to be able to voice my own opinions on any project that I have. Um, it comes down to the point of I really want that reliability of like if I click start, it goes. And like there is quite a few like. Dude, I love OBS. OBS is 100% open source, and it freaking works every time. But there's been so many things that I've tried that have been open source that it's been like, hey, did you download the latest update? Oh, no? Okay, everything's crashing. And it's like, great. So now I'm going to spend 20 minutes troubleshooting my own PC before I can actually use it. So like, that's, that's the hugest issue that I have against it. It's like just the reliability 
of immediate having that. Now that's not to say that Windows will not freaking screw you over because I literally just had an update download before I left my house today and I don't know what's going to happen when I power up my PC when I come home. <laughs> so that could be an adventure. But <laughs> Conversely, though, in, in similar context, um, I remember... A couple of years ago, I was using a commercial CAD system, uh, actually the CAM size of so the computer aided manufacturing side, uh, that is, I think it's $10,000 a seat a year. Sounds about right. So, um, you know, a significant investment. And we found a bug in it where if the value ended in seven, uh, which, you know, happened often. Um, this one particular operation that we used constantly would it would just take that seven and divide it by some arbitrary number and then um, take the the cutter which is in a you know hundred thousand dollar CNC machine and just slam it through the part like inches not 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 like a subtle movement but like <laughs> inches like basically punching a piece of steel um, at very high speeds and just destroy things if this number ended in 7. And it was in a particular update and we let the company know and our our their response was, oh oh wow, yeah that's a bad thing. We'll fix that in version 8. We had to pay for version 8. $10,000! That sucks, bro. Jeez. Right? And, and that was a that wasn't like a just us thing. That was across the entire distribution. Yeah. So you know, if only there is a way you could pay a developer to just make the fix, and then it propagates to anybody. Who or you know, software. as developers, if only there is a way that that could just source make could be the fix. opened. You know, like uh, yeah. Um, but you know that that was a you know. There, there's a both sides of the argument kind of thing. Absolutely. And, and no, I totally agree. <laughs> so you guys were aware at the time, version 8 wasn't going to come out for a year. It wasn't like a next thing, next week thing. Like, oh yeah, we're getting ready to release version 8, so yeah, we can we can go ahead and get on that for you. No. It wasn't coming out for a long time. And, you know, we multi-million dollar manufacturing company running off of the software suddenly to do this one operation that we did all the time, we had to make sure it didn't end in a seven. Like, that's a big deal. Jeez. So, you know, things. No, that's that's insanity. <laughs> even, even I will admit that that is freaking madness that something like that gets allowed. So, this was, uh, we're about at 30 minutes now. Um... Do you guys want to cut it off and see if we can turn this into an episode? Yeah. And uh, I'm okay see what it sounds no. like? I'm okay with just being a, a pilot. A, okay. An unofficial pilot. This was a good technical test. All right. But if you've listened to this, I'm sorry. The next <laughs> one will be slightly better organized. In a, in a less uh, noisy, noisy environment. environment. Maybe. With people not talking in the background the whole time. Definitely a less noisy environment. <laughs> I don't know if they're picking up on your eyes, but it's not picking up on mine. Uh, I will say, I will say my, my it's there. <laughs> gate capture didn't have the rain in it when it rained for a good 10 minutes while we were recording. Well, if this ever does see the light of day, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, this has been Makers on Tap. Uh, today was me, Christian, Aaron, and Joe just kind of sitting down and chatting around. Uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, talk about this more often and we'll be able to put out more episodes uh, if this ever does see the light of day uh, wherever you're listening to this maybe there will be more so maybe we'll see you next time maybe there will be more uh, there will be thanks guys <laughs>